Today we're going to answer the question, does pairing the MCEX 45G WR extension tube with the 110mm f2 lens eliminate the need for the 120mm macro lens? Let's get into it. The 110mm lens is a natural buy if you are on the GFX system. It's a lens that you would even buy into the GFX system for. And everyone keeps asking, is the 120mm lens necessary? if you own the 110. And this is because the focal lengths are just 10 millimeters apart, but they are very different lenses. Here we have the GF 110 millimeter lens. It is an equivalent of 87 millimeters on a full frame sensor. It has an aperture of F2 to F22. It's a pretty heavy lens weighing in at 2.22 pounds or 1,010 grams. It's a pretty pricey lens with an MSRP of $2,800. But the main thing here I wanna point out is the minimum focal distance is almost three feet or 90 centimeters, which is really big. But with this extension tube, the minimum focal distance is 9.72 inches or about 25 centimeters, which is a pretty drastic difference. And here we have the GF120. It is a 95 millimeter equivalent on a full frame sensor. It has an aperture of F4 to F32. It's a bit lighter than the 110, weighing in at 2.16 pounds or 980 grams. The MSRP is right up there at 2,700 and the minimum focal distance is about 1.5 feet or 45 centimeters. So it's about half of the minimum focal of the 110. But with the extension tube, its minimum focal distance is 7.36 inches or 18.7 centimeters. So the issue is if you wanna use the 110 to photograph really small objects, you're gonna be hit with the issue that the minimum focal distance is three feet or 90 centimeters, which is really large, but the 120 is about half that. And that's where we enter the extension tube. And this is a pretty expensive piece coming in at an MSRP of 329. It's a 45 millimeter tube. And what it does is it shortens the minimum focal distance and increases the magnification. And since this has terminals or electric connectivity, you can still have autofocus with this kind of. So what does this do? Well, the main thing is it basically converts your lens into a macro lens and only allows your lens to focus on short distances. And since extension tubes don't have any glass components, unlike teleconverters, it's said that there will be no degrade of image quality when using these. But we're gonna put that to the test. And it is said that some lenses handle extension tubes better than others, so we're also gonna test it out on the 120 millimeter as well. So enough of the specs, let's head to my studio and we'll jump into the first example of comparison. So jumping right into it, here's our enamel pin, and this is shot with the 110. So we are at our three foot minimum focal distance, and therefore the pin is pretty small in the frame. Zooming in at 100%, we have some pretty substantial detail, as it is 100 megapixels. We bring the highlights down a little bit. Zooming into 200%, we have a great amount of detail that we can see on the enamel metal, and even on the backing card, the gold foil print. But we can't zoom in too far as we are just quite simply so far away from the product. And now let's test out the 110 with the extension tube. So all you have to do is take off the caps. And like I mentioned before, this extension tube has terminals. So we get that autofocus capability. Next, you want to rotate your lens off the camera, attach the extension tube as if you are attaching your lens to a camera. And then of course, attach the lens and extension tube to your camera. And now you just wanna move your camera closer to the subject since our minimum focal distance is decreased. And now you just wanna find focus. So here with this shot, we have the 110 with the extension tube. And if we do a quick comparison, we can see that we can actually fill the entire frame with the pin, which is overkill, but this is an experiment. And this is just what a difference. This is basically zoomed in like 200% more. So let's take a look at this file. We are if I click to zoom, let's, let's go to 50% first. So as you can see, especially uh, from zooming in at the same similar level previously, we have a lot of, a lot going on here. This, this fall off is very extreme. Now we are shooting at F4, so it's just two clicks up from being wide open. And this is very, very extreme of a fall off. This is of course, this product is of course on an angle, but nevertheless, Zooming into 100, we could start to see some pretty crazy detail on the pin itself. At 200%, this is probably more than the, the you can easily see in real life, but we have some pretty extreme fall off going on and there's really just a pretty uh, a narrow blade in focus. 
but nevertheless it did achieve what we were trying to achieve. Let's take a look at the 120. So the cool part here is that since the minimum focal distances are very close, all you have to do once you have your tripod set up for the 110 and the macro tube is just swap out the 120 and you're pretty much ready to go. So here we have the 120, let's just do a quick comparison. So doing a quick comparison with the, the 110, with the extension tube and the 120, as we can see, we can get a little bit further punched in with the 110 as the minimum focal distance is a bit smaller. And if we were to zoom in a bit and do a quick comparison, I don't think I line these up 100%, but close enough, we can see that at 100% here. Uh, zooming in, these, these results are pretty similar. Obviously, like we said, the 110 is going to be a bit larger as we got closer to the subject. But these results are pretty similar, and I'm pretty happy with this. It does look like, again, the fall off is a little bit more extreme. You have the same sort of effect going on with the 120, but the 110 just looks a bit more extreme. So for this shot, I matched them both at f4. The 120 is just wide open at f4. The 110 is bumped up too. And let's just complete this again. I bumped the aperture up to f8. So let's just find our point of focus. There we go. So zoomed into 100%. It looks like, it looks like I may have potentially missed focus with the 120 or not in the desired spot. It looks like the focus is around here. Um, zooming in a little bit more. Yeah, pretty hard, pretty hard to, to get focused. A lot of things that could go wrong. Looks like I was a little soft in the 120. So let's just take a look at the 110. Zooming in to 300%. 200%, pretty solid. But this is not really the best example as no one's gonna be looking at enamel pins this close, no one really cares. I'm sure some people do, but you could see some really intense detail on the uh, the foil on the backing card. But I would say this is a pretty solid, pretty solid result here. And just for fun, let's take a look at the 120 with the extension tube as well. So zooming in, we're at 100%. Now we're at 200%. I mean, this is pretty intense. You can definitely see a ton of texture on the backing card and in the metal. If we zoom out, we have some, some fall off as well, but it looks like it's a little bit different of a result. So if we did a quick comparison with the 120 and the 110 with the extension tube, zooming in, we could see that, now these are both at F8. So, the 110, the 110 holds a, a larger amount of subject in focus. We, we definitely punched in really close with the 110. So obviously like the closer you get to the subject, the thin, more thin the blade of focus is going to be. So, but I just wanted to basically see how close we could get with the 120 and pretty, pretty close. This is pretty cool. So we've already established that the 110 is going to get us a bit closer to the subject. So as you can see here, I punched this in a little bit closer with the 110. The 120 is just a little bit more zoomed out. So zooming in at 66.7%, we could see we have a pretty narrow blade of focus, just as we did last time. We are going to be shooting at f8. We've already kind of explored shooting more wide open than that, and the results weren't super great. but we get a decent amount of detail here. We could see a super small piece of thread or something that would be probably hard to see with the human eye, all sorts of dust like that. Um, overall, not too bad. We zoom out a little bit. As you can see, this is the same sort of placement on an angle. Um, let's take a look at the 120. So zooming in. I think overall the 120 just looks a little bit sharper. We do a quick comparison, 120 on the left. It just looks like you get this, this sort of fall off a little bit closer with the 110, most likely due to the, the product, the camera being a little bit closer to the product itself. But overall, overall the results are pretty similar. 
I don't think you could go wrong with either in this specific situation, but I feel like the, the 120 is a little bit less extreme and a bit higher quality. Let's take a look at the 120 with the extension tube on. Zooming into 200%. Yeah, as you can see, it looks like this is this may be a smidge soft, but it is just hyper, hyper hard to focus with this, especially using the small screen on the camera. Maybe if I had an external screen, a seven inch or something like that, it'd be a bit easier to tell. But you know, th this looks like it's in focus. It just looks like it's a pretty narrow blade, but it, it could potentially be a little bit soft. Focusing with this with this extension tube is not like focusing with a normal lens. If you hold the a if you shoot manual and you hold the AF button down, it it will kind of jump around. It won't just hit focus. On this angle and in this setting, we have a material patch. So if we zoom in, jumping in with the 110 and the extension tube, zooming into 100%, this looks like a a totally different different result. Mammal pin seems to be a bit hard, but Zooming into 200% here, this doesn't look hyper sharp. I mean, we're, we're totally being pixel peepers here, but um, just for the point of it, this looks like it's a little bit, a little soft, meaning the thread, I just, I just would have expected this to be a bit sharper. I mean, this detail is pretty incredible. And honestly, zooming in at 100% is all you need, but just to to give the, the final, final verdict on this, um, I, I thought it would be a little bit sharper. Let's take a look at the 120. So the 120, same sort of thing. They're pretty similar. I For this example, I tried to line them up as, as close as I could. Zooming in at 120, this is definitely sharper. So it looks like the fabrics are, there's more detail in the fabric. They look sharper overall. And if we do a quick comparison, 120 on the left, um, Problem is, is that I don't know if I was able to hit the exact same point of focus, but yeah. So we get zoomed in a little bit more with the 110, but it just looks like the 120 is a little bit sharper. And if we try to match this zoom level, even if we try to match this, it looks like the, the 120, the 120 is still a bit sharper than the 110 with the macro tube. Yeah, you just get more detail in the fabric, at least to my eyes. And one for fun, here is the 120, zoomed in as close as possible with the macro lens. Let's go to 100%, I'm sorry, with the extension tube. Punched in at 200, this is pretty wild. Um, this looks a little a little soft. I, I think you're, we're reaching like the limits of what a lens could do, or maybe it's just a smidge too close, but Pretty cool that we can see all this dust and debris weaved into the, the fabric. Pretty interesting. Um, here, it looks like we have, I don't know, I, I want to say like chromatic aberrations, but may it just seems to be the effect of, you know, pushing the lens past what it's kind of supposed to do, right? And pretty neat here, you can see some white fabric pushing into the, the, uh, the black fabric or yellow fabric. And keeping with the fabric theme, again, shooting close to F8, we have the a spool of thread. So this is as close as we could get with the 110, roughly three feet away. Zooming in, start out with 100%. I mean, obviously this is impressive and everything looks pretty sharp. You know, you can't really go past 200%, but overall, you know, it's pretty impressive. But if we attach the 120, we can naturally get a bit closer and zooming in we can see much more detail. And doing a quick comparison between the two, if we click to zoom in, obviously at 100% on the 120, you get punched in substantially, substantially closer. I don't think Lightroom is loading. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, substantially more detail on the 120 as we are able to get much closer to the subject. And even if we look at the the fall off, the 120 is much more extreme as we are closer to the object. Now taking a look at the 110 versus the 120, the 110 with the extension tube, if we click to zoom in, here's where things get pretty interesting. We definitely look like we have a little bit more detail on the 110, 
Zooming into 200%, I think both these, it's it's a bit a bit much, zooming into 200%. But the 110 seems to hold up pretty well. It looks like, I don't know if the camera was 100% parallel with the spool of thread. So that's why most likely as we go up, we lose a little bit of, of sharpness. Looking at the 110 on its own, again, we have the same level of extreme fall off because we are closer to the object. And if we zoom in, we get some serious detail. And let's take a look at the 120 with the extension tube on, zooming in at 100%. And as you can see, the fall off is much more extreme. We only have a little bit in the center that is in focus and then we have some fall off quickly afterwards. And again, I think, I mean, this is pretty wild to be able to see layers of, of like mini thread that make up one light line of thread. It's pretty, pretty wild to see this breakdown. Like we're getting like microscopic levels here, but it's not really hyper sharp at that level. I'm not sure how sharp it would be if you had a scientific tool to do this, but nevertheless, and trying one more image here again at F8, zooming into 200%. This one seems to be, I locked focus a little bit better. Pretty, pretty just absolutely wild to see how you can see the levels of uh, how many different threads make up a thread. Pretty, pretty crazy, especially here. This is pretty wild. I would say the 120, as long as you can lock focus, the 120 seems to handle this extension tube a little bit better than the 110, which makes sense because it is a macro lens. And just a quick reminder, if you're finding this video helpful, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a ton. And back to the video. Right with the extension tube, the 120 on the left, zooming in, let's go to 100 first. And as you could see, it looks like, it looks like the 120 looks a bit sharper. So again, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. It looks like when you have the extension tube on, if your camera is not a hundred percent lined up in the same plane with the subject, you're, you're just, it's not going to be as sharp. It's just much more extreme, but it looks like, I mean, the 120 did a phenomenal job. If we were to just look at the, the 120. Um, zoomed in at 100%. I mean, this looks great. It's more than we need to see, especially with an SD card. But um, pretty, pretty, pretty hyper sharp. Could see all the texture in this tough, tough ceramic and plastic label and all of that. Um, even the background has a bit, it's interesting the fall off in the background, but it is shot wide open. Um, taking a look at the 110 real quick. Yeah, it just, it looks like this is a little, little soft. The tough word seems to be super sharp. And then this seems to be a little soft. So again, the camera was in the same exact position. And as you can see, the Sony logo is definitely a little soft. And if we go back to the one, the 120, this, this is sharp throughout the whole image. So it just seems to be much more extreme. Here we have both images shot at F8. And taking a quick look. This seems to work a bit better. Both of these seem to look pretty similar. So it just seems that F4 is not really ideal when shooting with the extension tube, but both of these look pretty on par, I would say. Obviously I didn't adjust the, the exposure to be 100% correct, 100% the same, but yeah, this is, I'm, I'm super happy with this result. I, I mean, if I zoom in even further, um, everything starts to, kind of break down a little bit at 200%, but I would say the, the 120 looks a bit sharper, just a smidge, but the 110 definitely held, held its own in this capacity. And just for fun, here is the, let's look at the 120 with the extension tube. And as you can see, it punches us in a little bit more. Let's take a look. I mean, honestly, I'm not sure how much we're, we're gaining here. This looks a little bit, a little bit soft over here. The tough looks pretty pretty in focus. And then it starts to get a little bit again, we have, it looks like we have some sort of, I don't know if chromatic aberrations is the proper term in this, in this situation, but we definitely have some, some effect of the teleconverter over here. And if we were to compare the 120 with and without the extension tube, this extension tube on the right, um, let's just, let's go into the tough word because we knew that was right. And if we try to match this zoom a little bit, yeah, it looks pretty, looks pretty good here, but again, if we go over, keep going over to the right, 
panning a bit. As you can see, it just starts to break down the further you go because I would say most likely the camera was not 100% lined up, so it just breaks down a bit. So the, can the extension tube get you there? Absolutely, but it just doesn't seem like a solution that someone who, if this was a super important product, just doesn't seem like the extension tube would pay off. Next up, we have flowers. I heavily regret this choice, at least orange flowers. The contrast was very hard to tell what was in focus. So we're starting out with this. I'm just going to walk you through the different f-stops just so we could see what is reasonable. Um, also flowers, you just need a, most people, if they're professionally shooting flowers, they focus stack like crazy. So just a, a bit of a rough example, but I wanted to include it because a lot of people like to take pictures of flowers with a macro lens. So zooming in, this was my point of focus. And as you can see, works pretty good at f4. We definitely have a decent amount of focus, but also a lot of extreme going on. In focus, out of focus, out of focus, in focus, out of focus. Um, next, we have f8. A bit better, more in focus. And then we, I pushed it to f11. Even better. Let's just zoom out a little bit, make it easier. Um, also, I just wanted to see, just for the heck of it, uh, I bumped it to f22. And honestly, it looks pretty good at f22. Um, if we zoom in, uh, this, where I mean, we're at 200%, but this looks pretty sharp, as does, as does this. The center seems to look a bit soft. I think we're hitting diffraction at this point, so it is what it is. But now that we have a baseline, let's take a look at the 110. And so starting with the 110, as you could see here, I am at F2. And we're just going to bring the saturation down a little bit. Um, zooming in, uh, definitely not, yeah, the focus is right here. It looks like right here, this narrow plane. If we're at 100%, it's really hard to tell if anything was in focus. You could see some lines that are, but, you know, this lens paired with the extension tube wide open, it's just good luck hitting focus. It took me quite a while to to test, that, test this out and, and get the shot. Headed to... F4, and zooming in a little bit, much better. Looks like we have some focus points here, although this quality does not look like the, the 120. So if we do a quick comparison here, both lenses at F4, as you can see, you just have substantially more detail on the 120. And if we zoom in, I don't think it's because I missed focus. It just looks like it's more extreme on the 110, and quite simply, just seems like the depth of field is just so much more extreme. Headed back to the 110, if we look at f8, this looks much better. But I still think if we zoom in, it's just not as sharp as the 120. So let's do a comparison. Here we have both images at f8, zoomed in to 100%, and the 120 is a clear winner here. Um, we have similar points that are sharp, so I don't think it's necessarily a missed focus type of thing. This lip of the flower here, they're both in focus. This part is soft on the 110, but not soft on the 120. Also, we have this lip here that, that also looks to be similarly in focus. So it just looks like, um, I mean, we're obviously pixel peeping here, but the 110 is just so much more extreme here, and the detail is just quite simply not there. And moving forward with the 110, the last example, we have F11. And I would say out of all the shots with the 110, this looks the best for sure. Let's do a, if we just do a quick pan, we can see definitely nice, nice and sharp over here. Nice and sharp here. Yeah, F, F it really needed to boost this image up, this aperture up on this image um, pretty substantially. And doing a quick comparison, both images at F11, I think the clear winner here is the 120. Um, Again, both there are signs that both images pretty much locked focus in the exact same, which let me tell you was very, very challenging to achieve um, because of how hard it was for the, the focus to lock with the macro tube on it. But nevertheless, you have similar depth of field here. The 110 still looks a little bit more extreme, but I would say, especially in this example, the 120 is a clear winner um, we are pixel peeping, so if we zoom out to you know something like 33%, um, they look pretty identical.
but you know if you wanted to print this large and you focus stacked it like crazy i mean you would probably be disappointed with the 110 the 120 is is the clear winner here even the bokeh if we look in the background and oddly the one the highlights might be substantially different but the the 120 even looks a little bit smoother with the fall off for those of you who don't know, aren't gym people. Uh, the barbell is just a long metal rod that you put weights on and you do various exercises. And the barbells have different types of neural on it. Neural being a type of way that the metal is so that you can basically grip it better. So this bar is a, a deadlift bar, it's a Texas deadlift bar, and this has very aggressive neural. So there's all different types of, types of neural. I'm gonna spare you, but this neural is basically little mountains. So this, we're going to look at the 120 first, zooming in at 100%. This looks pretty incredible, and it's really weird kind of seeing it this, this close up, but looks good, a lot in focus, a lot of fall off. Let's look at F8, zooming in, even better. Yeah, this looks like, this looks like Dragon Glass from Game of Thrones. Um, but yeah, very, very sharp, lots of detail, and looking at, F11, pretty solid. If we zoom in, pretty cool. You can see all the detail, wow. So obviously the macro lens looks great. Let's look at the 110. This was, this was kind of hard to focus on. As you can see, okay, we have the same sort of thing going on. Now, obviously I set the focus point to right in the center of the bar. But if we go over to the left side of the image, this is out of focus. If we go over to the right side of the image, that is out of focus. So we really just have the center portion to, to look at. And if we zoom in, we have some odd chromatic aberrations going on. Let's take a look at F4. Way better. This looks really good. Let's see if we have the same issue. Same issue left and right sides, out of focus, center, not too bad. Still have the chromatic aberrations. Let's keep going. F8, looking better and better as we increase the aperture. So still blurry, still blurry, center, not bad. This looks better, this looks pretty good. I think I took one more. I took two more, so F16, let's zoom in. So here we may, may be hitting diffraction. It's not super sharp. Oh, I skipped F11. Let's look at yeah, F11 sharper. So 16, we hit diffraction. Remember, diffraction is a real thing. It will get your photos. Um, so let's do F11 versus whatever F I did. F11 versus F11. There we go. So 110 on the left, of course, with the extension tube, 120 on the right. We are pretty much in the center of the image. Obviously the 110, we definitely got closer to the bar, so more of it is in focus. Um, let's go into 200%. Looks like the macro lens holds it better. Obviously we're zoomed in much more on the... No, I, yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Let me zoom in a little bit more, try to match it. Yeah, I think you do get closer with the 110, but to be honest, I, I, it's not really hardcore usable. I would say at this level of zoom, 116, that looks great. So let's match that visually up. That's pretty close. I'd say this holds up pretty well on this image specifically. If we keep going up. Yeah, not bad. Same issue though. If we go, if we take a look at the, the 120 and we zoom in, you pretty much have sharpness throughout the entire, entire plane, horizontal plane. But with the 110, due to the odd blurriness effect we get on the sides of the images, it's not sharp throughout. So it's pretty impressive. You can get, I think the detail is pretty much matched in the center, but I'm gonna give this win definitely to the 120 here, even if we're even though we're zoomed out a little bit more. Next up, we have a pin from Fujikina from last year. And this is by far the smallest object I've photographed. So if we zoom in at 100%, this looks pretty good. Um, let's keep going. So since this is so small, this object is so small, this probably fared the best out of, out of everything. Um, naturally, we have a bit of a blowout over here, but 
This looks pretty solid. If we go to the 120, same same highlight. I'd say this 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 is one example of where you can't go wrong with either lens because the project the the product is so small and it's it's such a small portion in the frame. But you could obviously not shoot this with the 110 and get a similar result. You would probably you know only this would probably be as far as you could zoom in on the 110 due to being three feet away and this pin being super small. But this was so small that I really, I had a lot of trouble kind of focusing. And just for fun, I attached the extension tube to the 120, zooming in at 200%. You definitely get a bit more detail, but it is a bit more extreme. This was really hard to focus. I, I'm not sure, yeah, this is kind of fall off blurry. I think this is, this looks to be in focus here. So 120 versus the 120. I'd say the extension tube definitely gets us a bit more detail on this for sure. This 2022 looks pretty good. Uh, definitely better than the version without the extension tube. But just like before, if we look at the outskirts of the image, it's definitely falling apart in focus as we get to the other extremes of the pin. So overall on the one without the extension tube, it seems to look pretty good throughout, maybe a little soft over here. It's weird, they have opposite problems, but yeah, this whole line of text looks great on the one on the extension tube, but as we make our way up, it gets a bit soft. But on the non-extension tube, it seems to be a little bit different. Kind of weird. This is this is an odd situation for sure, but it's such a small object that this was exceptionally hard to focus on. And next up, we have an event pass. So here we have the 120. Let's zoom in. We are at 100% right now. So obviously this is substantially more than the eye can see. I'm sure if I, if I look really close up, you could see the breakdown of the dot pattern. Let's take a look at the 110 with the extension tube on and if we zoom in, oddly, this is completely out of focus, moving our way towards the center. Again, this is really sharp. Um, we zoom in, this is pretty wild. We can see, uh, see the dot pattern very, very clearly and some scratches and all of that. Again, we're at 200%, so pretty extreme. But if we make our way towards the other end, not in focus at all. And if we keep going, we have this weird effect where it's sharp in the center, and then as you get out to the edges, it, it is not sharp um, at all. It doesn't doesn't hold it up. And I'm not sure if it really even it even is based on how level the camera is. I think it's just an effect now that we're seeing this in multiple images. But zooming into the center, crazy sharp. As you can see, if we line this up, we just get substantially more detail with the 110 as we can get a bit closer to the subject. And this is very, very sharp here. But as you can see, we make our way towards the end of the image. Both, both don't look great as it wasn't completely lined up level with the floor, but the 110 is substantially worse. The 120, yeah, the 120 is just basically until we get to the extreme end of the, the blue Miami part, it's, it's good on the 120, but the 110, it's just the center's cool, nice and sharp, and then we get blurry, blurry, very, very kind of narrow depth of field and this kind of like wrapping effect. So what's the verdict? Well, I don't feel that there's ever a cheap solution to convert an existing lens into something completely different or something a bit different. So if you have a teleconverter and you want to convert your 200 millimeter lens to a 400 millimeter lens or even a 300 millimeter lens, I just don't feel like the teleconverters ever really achieve that without a degrade in quality. And honestly, I feel like the same thing holds true to this extension tube. Does this work? Absolutely. We just went over a bunch of examples and to be honest, in some situations, this works really well, but it's really hard to use. It's hard to tell when your object is in focus. As we've discussed, I have spent 10 plus minutes trying to get one shot and afterwards I just kind of gave up, loaded up the files in my computer and they did work out. But it's not really a solution for people looking to do really serious product photography. 
If you're not using this lens for professional purposes, sure, put this on your 110 and you do get that macro use out of it. But if you're looking to convert your 110 into a magical macro lens that's meticulous in quality, this is not going to do it for you. So to answer the question, the 120 cannot be replaced. If you are looking for a macro lens, if you're looking for a studio lens and you want to shoot smaller objects, the 110 is just not going to cut it. And to be honest, stacking this on to the 110, in my opinion, is not going to cut it either. So my question for you is, do you own this extension tube and have you tested it out with maybe different lenses? I'd love to talk more with you in the comments about it. I am not a big fan of this, but maybe you found better uses for it than me. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a ton as I'm trying to grow this channel and make more videos for you guys more frequently. Also, if you would love to buy me a coffee, I have a link in the bio. If you found this video really helpful and maybe influence the buying decision for you, that would be really cool. Stay tuned because I have a video on the 110 versus 80 millimeter coming up. And with that being said, talk to you in the next video.